Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of HP Verticus Conference. Uh, we're here on the ground. The hashtag is HP Big Data 2013. We're watching the Twitter feed, so tweet at us. We'd be happy to uh, answer and engage with you. Again, this is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Chris Wegerson is here. He's with the DNC, the Democratic National Committee. He's the Director of Data Architecture, gave a keynote yesterday at this conference. Uh, Chris, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Sure, thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, we were talking off camera and I was saying, you know, several years ago, you wouldn't think all about all this innovation coming out of things like the DNC. Uh, we had, we've had some folks on from Obama for America and the mm -hmm. way in which uh, data is now being used uh, for advantage Mm -hmm. to raise money, uh, to identify trends. Uh, so first of all, congratulations. Thank How you. did this all come about for, for you personally? Um, so I, I actually got involved um, on the, the campaign in, in uh, the, the first, uh, the, the president's first campaign back when he was a, a senator um, in, during the, the, the primaries. And, uh, and actually, you know, at the time there was no, um, there was no real analytics, there was no you know, big, Sort of data program, um, you know the teams that we have now, uh, uh, you know didn't didn't exist then, um, and uh, you know I, I really wanted to um, you know get involved to to help um, you know help with what I believed in, um, and uh, and it's actually been an interesting experience that that you know sort of over time that's evolved to now it's it's actually a really interesting technical problem, um, you know that we have we've created these you know this this uh, uh, all of this you know data and, and want to do something interesting with it. Um, and so now we've, we're sort of on the, the, the cutting edge. Um, and, uh, and it's just happened in a few years. So tell people who may not be familiar with the story, what, what, what did you guys do with data and, and what was the impact on you know, the campaign and some of the outcomes? Um, we did uh, everything with data. Um, you know, what, what we wanted to do, uh, so you know, Jim Messina, our campaign manager, has actually said you know, that he wanted to uh, measure everything, um, you know, put analytics in, in every aspect um, of the, organiz uh, the organization. And, and that, was, that was really what we, um, you know, what we uh, uh, strove to do, was to figure out, okay, you know, where are all of these sort of distinct buckets of, of data that for years have you know, been sitting you know, untapped out you know, all over the place. Um, how do we bring those together? Um, and then more than that, how do we take that and, um, and, and start you know, deriving you know, actual intelligence from it um, quickly? I mean, we had, uh, you know, I, I said um, during the, the keynote yesterday um, that you know, we had the mother of all deadlines. Um, and that's really true. I mean, it's like you know, we, we couldn't deliver something you know, the day after election day. Um, and in fact, it wasn't even that we couldn't deliver it the day after election day. You know, the campaigns are very scheduled and you have to have things um, you know, at very, you know, very specific times. Um, and so just the, the challenge of, of trying to, um, without, uh, you know, you can't have a big technology buildup before producing sort of analytic insight. Um, so one of our challenges and, and why, you know, we, um, uh, you know, why we came to, to, to uh, HP Vertica, for instance, was just because we needed that, that ability to, um, to move very quickly from you know data spread all over the place to actually be able to um, you know do smart things with it quickly. Um, it's the ultimate challenge too on the ramp up, and then you said the ultimate deadline. <laughs> it's like it's got to work, it's got to work. And um, take us through the the rocket ship of, of the team, and what were some of the insights that you've learned from that? So take us through some of the some of the things that that happened that were were very cool and uh, motivating, and also talk about some of the challenges and uh, what insights you gleaned from that. Well, you know, I, we we hadn't um, you know we we hadn't had experiences where we give uh, you know such a large team you know access to uh, with without a lot of SQL experience. You know, that was the thing is that when we built this analytics team, we were like, well, we want people who are 
really smart, you know, who get the, the underlying problems, um, but they're not, they're not going to be technology wizards. We're going to have, you we know... have DBAs. They're, just, they're people in the field, right? Right. Well, you know... Or, and, or experts. Right. You know, people, people who, who understand sort of the, the, the you know, of, of, you know, voting and, and, and all of that, um, or, you know, fundraising or, you know, what, whatever, you know, their, their specific target was. Um, we wanted to, you know, bring those people and, um, you know, give them the ability to, um, you know, serve themselves, right? To 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 um, to get into the data and um, just you know play around with it. Um, and so our our team was was sort of about removing those uh, you know the, the analytics technology um, sort of team that 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 I headed up. You know, was about sort of pulling down those barriers so that those analysts could go. So and making it as easy as Google search. Right. Well, you know, yeah. it was a little bit harder. And that was, you know, that <laughs> but was not the, SQL queries. Right. Well, no, no. So they, they, our, our entire team was using SQL. Um, so we had uh, uh, our, our internal analytics team was about, um, I think, maybe uh, 50 or so people. Um, and then out in the States, so we had, you know, embedded teams of, uh, of analysts sort of out in the States that maybe totaled, and throughout other parts of the campaign as well, maybe totaled another 50 people. Um, the ones who didn't know SQL, and there were many, we taught SQL, and so we had this crew of, of you know, 100 plus people who were in there um, and could work with the data. And it wasn't hard to teach them SQL. Um, and, but then they were empowered to, you know, if they could find two tables, they could join them, and we didn't have to worry about performance. Um, and that was really empowering. So they had the post-it note of the command, and they just That's did what they, they had to well, do. You know, right. uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, so I mean, you know, we, we had some queries that were not necessarily the best. You know, uh, <laughs> you get these giant nested subqueries many ways down, which are how people think, and that's great. Um, but people but hungry for data can learn basic SQL. Absolutely, I mean, they're starving for data, and that's that's it. They were, and you know, that's what we saw across the organization is that the more people use this, the more they wanted to use it more. Right? It's you know, once you have access to it, um, to the magic of it, it's, it's then beautiful. it just you know feeds back in on itself. And so we were just we were just there, just always slightly lowering the barrier so that um, you know people could figure things out. So was this thing powered by Vertica, or are you just here as a thought leader? Or <laughs> um, so th this, this was uh, powered by um, Vertica. I mean, every diagram that I draw of how you know, the analytics operation works, whether it's about how we sort of worked in terms of process or how our data flowed, um, Vertica is you know, right there um, at, at the center of it. And, and that was a big part of how we were able to, to do this, was because uh, we didn't have to worry about sort of a complicated, you know, ETL process to get things into there or, um, you know, how is this going to perform. We were able to get our, our data in there in its, its raw form right away and people could start using it. So our analysts were, you know, in there right away um, and then we were able to sort of build on top of that and grow out from there um, to the point that, you know, everything that was happening on our analytics team was basically touching Vertica. So what, what, what were your data sources? I mean, presumably you started this, this, this journey and said, all right, what, what data sources are we going to use? <laughs> I mean, there, there's so many, but what were the primary ones and, and, and how did you get them in there? Sure, um, I mean, there are, uh, you know, I, I can't talk about, um, you know, everything that, that um, we had, but, um, you know, we, we had a, a lot of um, pools of data. You know, we, we part of our, our sort of core is um, a registered voter list. So mm -hmm. um, states are required by law to keep an electronic list of all the voters. Um, you know, uh, whether they have voted in the past, but not who they voted for, obviously. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so that forms our core. So now we know... So that's who, public data. That's right? public data, okay. yep. And then you had some of your own IP. That's yeah, right. That's I mean, so we, I mean, you know, our, all of the contributions that are coming in, um, all of our volunteer field interactions, so when somebody knocks on a door, makes a phone call, we get data about that. And that's exclusive, um, obviously, to DNC. You don't yep. share that. That's your competitive advantage. Yep. Okay. Um, and, and you had other public sources. You had social data? Yep, yeah. social data. Um, you know, uh, um, I mean, we... we uh, um, I mean, yeah, anything, anything okay. we can find. So we, uh, how did the data get in to the platform? Sure, um, we actually had a, a lot of different um, paths for that. We, we ended up um, building uh, sort of our, our own, um, uh, sort of our, our own system for being able to plug into the databases that our organization had already set up. So, I mean, we had one of everything. There was, you know, MySQL, Postgres, uh, 
Microsoft SQL Server, um, you know, raw text files, whatever, whatever we had, there was, there was around there. Um, and so we actually ended up building sort of a process to um, feed that data into Vertica. And that was, again, sort of, you know, we didn't want to transform it. We didn't want to do anything. We wanted to grab sort of just whatever was new was coming out somewhere um, and, and drop it in, into the system. So um, we ended up uh, being sort of, um, you know, unhappy with what we could find that required very little effort to, if I just want to copy a table, I should be able to copy a table. And now, uh, so so we, we ended up creating a pretty um, uh, impressive system, I think, uh, of, to, to move all of that around. And, and the platform, I'm assuming, is candidate agnostic. I mean, you guys are building something that you can you know, last and, and continue and, and evolve and innovate. Where do, where do you see taking this in the future? Well, that's, I mean, you know, our big challenge now, I mean, if you look at, um, you know, I, I think of 20, uh, 2012, the, the, the presidential um, reelect, as, you know, we had one giant tower um, you know, it was a, a you know, gleaming office building of, um, <laughs> of you know, but you know, a single a single focus, right? Uh, we all had the same mission. We had the same leadership. Um, we were organized. We had this sort of central, um, you know, campaign analytics team, central organization. Um, the uh, our next big challenge is 2014, the midterms. How do we take this and um, you know, sort of tip this organization right on its side? Right now, we're dealing with all of these different um, independent campaigns um, who are all clamoring to have uh, you know, the innovation that, um, that they know is out there, I mean, that the, the Obama campaign did. How, do they, um, you know, how can we do that for all of these smaller campaigns which have you know, fewer resources, fewer staff? Um, and you have to make trade-offs too. You right. Know, based on probabilities of success, right? Um, so are you using analytics to do that? Or? Um, uh, you know, I can't talk too much about that, but okay. I mean, you know, we're definitely being, so yes. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, smart about, about yeah. how we operate. So. Right. so what is the biggest thing you've learned, um, that the, well, the biggest surprise that you, you uh, had that you didn't expect that happened over the course of your journey? Um, boy, the, the, the biggest, the biggest surprise, um, you know, it, I, I think it was the, the, oh my gosh, this is going to work moment, right? It's, I mean, you know, we were having all of these analysts, um, you know, hit the system. It's, it's actually really difficult, at least for us, you know, having no experience doing this before, building, you know, even a, like a, a proof of concept, right, during the evaluation stage to figure out, like, you know, how are we going to do this? And, and so, you know, having the system there and, um, and, you know, having this entire organization of, you know, 100 plus people, I mean, at, you know, at any given time, we had maybe 30, 40 people just in there um, analyzing data. I mean, that's, that, that's pretty incredible from an organization where that, that didn't exist before. You know, we built it in, you know, six months, a few months, I don't know, you know, it's... Um, you have to, um, I, I want to ask you about how you balance your public persona, and you guys are out, you're talking, and that's mm. great because you're, you're marketing yourselves and attracting you know, new people and new you know, contributors, collaborators, young people, old people, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you've got some pretty serious IP that you're mm -hmm. trying to protect. Uh, yeah. Do you have that discussion internally? I mean, I presume it's not a free-for-all. How does that all, you know, work? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of us have been, uh, have, have been in, you know, in this for, for several years now, and I, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, a, a sense of, of joint um, kind of investment uh, in this, um, it, it's certainly hard to, you know, we, we have to balance, like you say, but part of this is, you know, going out and we want people to be excited about this. Um, we want people to know that we are, you know, thought leaders, like this is, you know, this is, this is the, the um, you know, the, the image that, um, you know, we're trying to project and we, we have to, you know, we, we need to bring in staff, like this is driven by, by staff and we want people to know that we're doing really cool stuff, um, and so, you know, we, we, yeah, we have to, we have to be walk a delicate line between, um, you know, giving away the, uh, the, the, the secret sauce um, and, uh, and, and talking enough. But a lot of the technology problems, like, you know, this is out here. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, sp you know, it, it, certainly if you spend enough money, you can have the technology um, that, that we have, and you can pay somebody to do the work that, you know, my team did, and that's, that's, not, that's not a secret. Right, it's the, um, it's, it's the people in the process behind that. that exactly, is, uh, and, and yeah. so you know, what we have is this organization that channels you know, this data and analytics um, 
sort of, you know, and, and operationalizes it. And that's the real secret. So a lot of people watch theCUBE. Uh, there's people out there maybe want to get involved. What kind of people are you looking for on, on your team, whether it's data scientists, mathematicians, statisticians, programmers? Who are you trying to attract? Let's see, data scientists, mathematicians, <laughs> statisticians, <laughs> programmers. Um, <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I think, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, um, working, you know, working on a, a political campaign sort of during a political cycle is, is hard. Um, and you certainly have to, have to want, um, want it. Like, you know, we, we work sort of crazy hours. Um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, we, we want to build this team of, of people who are, um, you know, who are, you know, we want sort of great engineers, great analysts. They're all sort of part of, of building this, this platform that um, What's the hardest part? Is it, I mean, it's a zero-sum game. It's like mm -hmm. sports in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, and and y you've got a, a very tight time frames. You've got intense competition. You've got, I'm sure, demanding bosses. What's the hardest part? Um, lack of sleep. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're young, so that's not... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, no, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the the... The timelines make it tough. It, it really forces a different way of thinking about things. But I think it's a way that's been very productive for us. Um, you know, rather than thinking about, okay, what is, you know, what is this project that we can set sort of a, a long roadmap for and, and you know, sort of work through, it's, okay, what can we do in a week that's going to add value? And then at the end of that week, we're like, okay, you know, put it in the analyst's hands. Did you direct? And then a week later, okay, did you get any value from that? Yes. Then let's see if we can make it a little bit better. Um, no, let's throw it out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can't, you know, work on that anymore. And, and so... Um, John, I always use the, the Jim Harbaugh quote, you're either, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You guys are constantly trying to get a little bit better mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. right? That's really so what's next? Thing. So final question, we've got a, a break here, but I want to ask the final question. What's next for you guys? What, what do you guys continu continuously improve on? Um, so, I mean, you know, we, we've got a lot of, a lot of different uh, challenges. Um, I mean, I think there's, there's a lot of growth in, in um, uh, sort of in the, the, the social uh, media area where we, we broke the, the surface of that on the campaign. We did some cool stuff, but um, there's, there's a lot to learn. I think there's a lot to learn sort of across the entire um, space. Um, I mean, right now we're really focused, again, sort of on that, how do we take this, you know, big tower operation and make it into a bunch of little houses. Yeah, um, it out and people empower people to do more. Exactly, um, when you know, it's, it's just a very different uh, structure, a very different set of challenges. Um, and, and how do we get that into, thinking even longer term, how do we get that down to even smaller campaigns than you know, Senate and House that, that um, can maybe afford to have in-house staff doing these things? How do we make this accessible to even the smallest campaigns? Um, and that's a real... Um, Final question, just to kind of add one more point. What's your advice to business folks out there? We had Moneyball up here, Billy Bean, mm -hmm. talking about how they use data. And obviously, that's a big book and movie. Obviously, Brad Pitt. But obviously, it's, it's an example of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. You're a great use case in politics. Mm -hmm. A lot of business folks want to disrupt. They want to do things differently to make a difference for their business. As George Kadifa pointed out, it's not just bottom line. It's like top line or revenue or impact. Right. What's your advice to the business folks out there? Um, you know, empower analysts. There are a lot of smart people out there, and you know they can acquire skills like, you know, SQL and and um, you know and to some extent you know R and and things like that. Um, but you've got to sort of break down those barriers so that they can start, um, you know, getting at the data, um, you know, looking across the entire universe of, of data rather than sort of being in their little little sector, um, in their little cave or yeah. fenced-in environment. Yeah, well, we were in a cave, but it was, uh, uh, we liked it. Did you see the Billy Bean talk yesterday? Yeah, yeah, for that? Yeah. Um, you know, it was when, when, that, when Michael Lewis's book first came out, I said, this, Billy Bean's out of his mind sharing this information. Everybody's this copycat league, everybody's going to do the same thing. And I guess it's not like the NFL, John, right? The, which is a copycat league, because they, they, they've continued to succeed. Mm -hmm. What was you know, notable is that it seems like the organizational friction in other teams has continued. Did mm -hmm. you see that? Within the DNC, was there sort of a faction that said, "No, you got to have the political experience, the gut feels, the..." And you even see that today when people are predicting elections. You know, 
We were we were very fortunate to have a team. You know, like I said, you know, uh, you know, from from the very top. I mean, even you know, President, uh, Campaign Manager Jim Messina. Mm -hmm. um, you know, throughout the organization, it's you know, where's the data? Um, and so you know, it's a mandate essentially. It, yeah, and you know, it's it's true. I mean, there's there is sort of in in politics, it's it's a very traditional. I mean, and, and sort of what uh, uh, Billy Bean was saying you know, that did resonate because it was like, yeah, you know, you are dealing with sort of some very traditional ways of of thinking at, about things and just saying, you know, trying to say, well, you know, you can look at it with, with data. And, um, but, you know, the reason we were so successful, I think, is because we had this organization aligned um, and uh, where everybody was bought in. Um, and I think that that's, that's new, um, but sort of very exciting. It's interesting, uh, you know, the night before the election, John McLaughlin on the McLaughlin group, uh, Romney by X, he predicted it, and he, no, Nate Silver's nailed this thing, you know, yeah. state by state, what are you talking about? So, yeah. it's yeah. interesting to see that dichotomy of no, philosophy. Nate Silver so. works for ESPN, maybe he'll start working for a social media company. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, uh, they continue to go. Journalism uh, is good stuff. to tech companies, so we'll see, the world's changing. I uh, see uh, Washington Post is bought by Bezos, and Boston Globe is yeah. bought by Red Sox owner. What the hell's going on in this world? <laughs> so we'll see. All this great stuff, really kind of changing the landscape. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. We're psyched to watch you guys because, one, we really believe that data is going to liberate and create disruptive innovation. Mm -hmm. I think you guys are a great example uh, in politics where mm -hmm. using and measuring data allows you to be more agile, more responsive, and more targeted, more accurate, and more, more accountable. Yep. And I think businesses can learn from that. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, Chris, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate thanks it. For having me. This is SiliconANGLE, we buzz theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise. Not a lot of noise here, a lot of end users, a lot of, a lot of heavyweights here, really doing some pioneering work. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>